If you've been thinking about getting a Stream Deck, you probably have two questions. Should I get one? And if so, which one would be right for me? And that's what we're going to discuss. And I happen to have four of them on my desk right now with me. So we will talk about what it is, why you might buy one, and we're going to compare these. And based on my experience, just sharing my opinion on what might be right for you, depending on your context. I am not going to talk about the mobile app, the pedal, or the Stream Deck Studio. We're just going to focus on the desktop versions, which are the most likely ones that you've been thinking about. So let's start with what it is. If you're not really familiar or you're not totally sure, it is a desktop accessory that is programmable. So you get to program these keys. They can control your computer, like applications on your computer, such as turning on and off your microphone or camera during a meeting. So this is for a Microsoft Teams profile. If you want to control everything here and not have to fuss about with your cursor and find exactly where to click and where not. So it can really speed things up that way. But it's not just your computer. It can also control accessories. So if you have smart lights, you can press a button and maybe turn off your lights or turn them back on or adjust the brightness. You can also use some of the keys. They aren't controlling anything. They're just helpful. Like this timer. Sometimes I do co-working sessions with other people and I will press this timer so that we know exactly how much time is left. And if I am working, it's going to chime and tell me time is up so that I remember to stop working. And that is not controlling anything. It's just a really helpful feature to have to help you get work done. So when you program these, the screens can change either. Sometimes they're, they're customized automatically. Like if you say, I want to open a program, it'll just show you the logo of the program. Other times you might program your own background so you can really make it look your own. Let's get into the different reasons why you might want one. <laughs> the first thing for me is just it saves time. And even though it might seem little, there's a chance you might think it's not that onerous to go and find my mic and turn it on or to you know do stuff with my, my keyboard. I'm already pretty quick. Yes, you might be. And these can also save you time. So not having to find things on your screen. If you have a lot of windows open and you are navigating your cursor and then you need to get over the exact button that you need to press and press that compared to just reaching over and pressing one key on your desk, I find that these just overall, depending on what it is, can be faster. The other thing is that you can also program to do multiple things. For example, over here, I have them actually on a couple, but it's hard to see because cameras don't like filming screens, but I have a couple of what's called multi-actions. This is an example of, it's called, it says KPIs. And every month I do my key performance indicators for my business. It used to take me a while because I would have to open up the file and then I'd open up all the different sites that I reference in order to track my key performance indicators. This one button opens all of the websites and the Excel file so that I have everything ready to go. The other one I have here is my bookkeeping. It used to take me so long to open everything I needed in order to do all the bookkeeping. With one button press, I can open my accounting software, my banking site, my PayPal, my Stripe, and some of the stuff is I have to do manually. It will also open Excel and it opens the folder where I save all of my financial documents. That has cut the time of these recurring tasks so much shorter that even that alone <laughs> is probably worth it. Even if I just had this little guy, which I do have these tracked here as well, then that that alone, the sanity of just pressing one button and having everything at your fingertips, that to me is really good. The other issue is that it, it allows you to let go of remembering things. For example, I have hex codes for my brand, which I can almost never remember my brand color hex codes, but these are just text keys where I just, all that's in here are the hex codes. And then I created the little circles to customize. So I know which color it is. And I could just press that button and then I've got the hex code. Same thing with links. Actually, let's give an example here. If you have, I've got affiliate links that I share for software that I use. I don't have to remember them or I don't have to go searching for them. They're just in this folder so that if someone asks if I have the link, I can just grab, just open that folder and press that button and it populates the link. So it acts as a text expander. If you are someone like me who runs workshops or you're giving instructions, I will pre-program activity instructions, access to the workshop link, say here, can I have your feedback? 
And all of that is pre-programmed before I even start the workshop so that all I have to do is open the chat, press that button and send. It's say, it can just really, really save you time when it comes to not having to search for things, but also not having to type out every little thing. And those things add up over time. So those are some of the main reasons. The other thing, the final thing I'll say around why you might like it is that they are tactile. So I can, you know, rest my hand on the corner and advance my slides or go to the next scene. For example, if I press next scene, I have this slightly different scene where you're, you've got a better view of this, which we are going to actually start comparing. Let's actually start with the biggest. This is the Stream Deck XL. It has 32 keys. And these 32 keys are really, really helpful if you are someone who runs productions, meaning you are maybe live streaming and you have a lot of different overlays, graphics, sound effects, if you want to be able to quickly mute, unmute, or if you're someone like me who is running workshops where I want to be able to jump to different scenes for my workshop, maybe show overlays, or maybe you're someone who is using PowerPoint or Keynote, you're advancing slides, if you have activities, you can pre-program all of those. If you have links to share, you can program those. You can turn music on and off if people are, maybe you've got a breakout room. You can also control the meeting. So I can mute everybody except for the host. While if, I, if people unmuted by accident, you can go into full screen. This example here is switching between gallery and speaker view. So there are so many things you can do. Even just hitting record or pause your recording, they can all be there. The reason I think this is great if you are running a production is that you don't have to change the page. Yes, you can. This is an example of going to another page. And this is actually a sample of controlling the prompter. And, and one of the th reasons I have this is that you can actually replace dial. You don't need dials if you're attracted to the dials. But if I'm actually running a presentation and I want to see the prompter and control the prompter, I would actually use these 32 keys to control my presentation, probably control the meeting or the stream and control the prompter. There is enough room for you to have a lot on here without having to switch. So if you need a lot of things at your fingertips, I would say the XL is definitely a great choice. So you're not fussing around with pages. Let's take a look at the next one, which is the plus. Now the plus, this is primarily the primary difference is that it's got four dials, eight keys, a touch strip, four dials. The dials are really great if you have a prompter. <laughs> so even though I showed you prompter controls on the 32, as a prompter user, I really do like having a Stream Deck Plus. Not only can I, if we go to this page, this is an example. These are all prompter controls. I have controls here, like switching the mode of the prompter from display to text, I can start the script. I can go to the next chapter. I can though also do that here with the control with that dial, which is more fine tuned. I can adjust the scroll speed, the opacity, and also the brightness. So sometimes if you are presenting and something bright is on the screen, it can actually sort of wash you out a little bit, unfortunately. And so I might turn down the brightness on the screen so that it's not so harsh. And I just find the dials are more intuitive for things like brightness, opacity, speed, control. But let's say you're not using the prompter. Other things like volume are really helpful or zooming in and out. If you are using an editing software to be able to just zoom in and out of the timeline, I find extremely helpful. Um, there's also, some, this is just fun. You can have all your international time zones to know what time it is in different cities. That is the world clock. That's just a fun feature. And you can actually have the world clock on, on keys as well. The other thing that the Excel or that the, sorry, the Stream Deck Plus has is that if you do, you, you think oh, eight keys is really not a lot. They do have the option to program here. I've actually programmed multiple actions and I can just toggle till I find the one I want and press the button and it's going to trigger that action. So there are, they are really making it easier for you to load more things on here and really expand this. Also the navigation of being able to go through these different areas, I just find is really, really helpful. So the Stream Deck Plus is great for, if you are thinking about using the dials, obviously I think the prompter is an obvious one. The other thing is you can expand it. So right now I've got the accessory, it's a little bit limited because of the cords, 
This is the adapter for the hub. So I've got the USB hub and that's one option. There's also a card slot here on the side. You can also get the adapter that has the XLR input, essentially turning your Stream Deck Plus into an audio interface so you can connect an XLR microphone. And if you have the Stream Deck Plus, you then get access to the Wavelink software. So it's an audio mixing software that usually you would only get that if you buy an Elgato mic. But if you have the Stream Deck Plus, regardless of which XLR mic you have, you can actually, or actually, I think regardless of the mic, it doesn't have to be XLR, you can use the Wavelink software. If you have the XLR adapter, then obviously it's just for XLR mics, but you can use the Wavelink software with any mic. And that allows you to do audio mixing, like bringing in different sound effects. You can dial in the volume of the different levels. You can adjust your monitor and your microphone, all of that using the Wavelink software. So there are some advantages to the Stream Deck Plus that you just don't get with the key only options. Let's go over to the Stream Deck, the 15 key. This is the sort of original, although I don't think they make this version right now. I think the one they make is, uh, doesn't detach. <laughs> But same principle applies. It's around the same footprint. It's got 15 keys. If everything is said about the dials and the adapters, you're just like, nah, I don't need that. And I don't run a production. I think 15 is a really great option for many people because even if you were, let's say, running a presentation, maybe you're just navigating a couple slides. You want to have some controls to mute, unmute, and maybe you want to you know, be able to have program some instructions. You could easily do that with 15 keys. And you can also use things like page navigation. This is an empty page, but you can toggle between pages. You can use folders. 15 can actually get you really far. And I think for many people, the 15 key is a really viable option. And then same kind of thing applies. This is the, the adorable little Neo. First of all, it's so cute. It's got eight keys and it does have these little page uh, turn so you can just tap these to change pages and you can customize this strip down here so this is one example where I have the time and the pages this other example it's a little hard to see here because of the the color I chose but you can customize the clock to make it look like you want this is also really portable so the back here this is kind of tacky so it doesn't move around when you're pressing buttons but you can easily just fold this up and I do travel with this. I can throw this in my backpack and the cable is USB-C and that means that it works really nicely with my laptop. I don't need an adapter to plug it in. So this is a great option. I think if you like the idea of the keys, the programmable keys, you're okay with just using the navigation here. You can still have the multi-actions, the links. So having a folder with all your links handy or having a folder with your the example of the hex codes, but all the things you can do over here, with the exception of the dials, you can do here. And actually most things you can do with dials, you can do with keys. And the primary example I'll use is this one, where you can choose to set these up. So these are all prompter controls. For example, this is opacity. If I were to just press this, you can see it going down as I change the opacity and same thing going back up. And let's say I go down. I can also have a key that's just set to the one I use the most. And when I press that, it automatically f follows. So this is like yes, dials in a way, or like sliders. You can do this vertical or horizontal. So even if you don't have the dials, you can still do that stuff. So keep in mind your context for what you think you would use it for most. Are you primarily using it for productivity, for remembering things, for text? And in which case you can probably get away with fewer buttons. If it's a production, I would go with the 32. If you're prompter, you can use prompter with this one, but if you're primarily prompter and you don't have a big production, I think it's Stream Deck Plus. And the ability to add on the hub accessories like the USB hub to connect extra accessories is really nice. And, and also these are, either of these are great if you're just kind of getting started. And these are really good price points as well. Overall, I just want to emphasize, keep in mind your context, what you would use this for. There are so many things I could have covered that I did not cover because there's so there's so much potential with the Stream Deck. It really does make my life easier, my work easier. It's great for just everyday productivity. And of course, it really is great for if you are trying to run more professional, engaging, and seamless virtual presentations. <laughs>